up everyone? Today's install will be a Garmin Panoptic sonar module with live scope on a Whirlcat. So let's get into it. Alright, what we have here is what's in the box laid out. Um, first off, we'll start with the transducer. You can see here, it looks like it has three elements on it. Um, one thing I do want you guys to recognize is this big plug. It's a little different, so plan accordingly. Your hole size will be a lot larger than normal. Power cord, network cable. The thing different about this is it doesn't actually use a network RJ45 on the sonar module and it uses a, a connector like that and you have an adapter which goes to your Garmin RJ45 connector to the cable for your GLS-10 sonar module. Um, we're gonna use the transom bracket for this one and this is the GLS-10 module. As you can see that network port I was talking about. It's right there, a little different for Garmin. Maybe that's something you know, new for their future lineup, who knows. But uh, all right, let's get into it. All right, so I got the location figured out and I'm gonna start drilling the holes. Um, start with a smaller bit, working my way up to the correct size for the screws. I don't want the holes to be too big, so I, you know, drill a little bit smaller. Um, chamfer out the holes with your Phillips bit or a chamfer bit, whatever, just so the gel coat doesn't crack. Um, once we get that done, we apply some 4200 inside the holes make sure you put enough in there to where it comes back out just a little bit as you can see there all right <clears throat> also i like to put 4200 on the screws um, before i install them just just to get it in those threads so no water intrusion occurs and let's see we're going to go ahead and put the first screw in whoops all right so Line it up, screw it in. I, I work my screw back and forth a little bit so that it conforms to the, the hole. Nice and tight. Don't screw it down all the way yet. Just get it snug so you can get your other screws in. Oh, got to put 4200 on it. There we go. Same deal, work the screw back and forth. I don't want it to be too loose. Um, that way it never works its way out every time either. 4200 should hold it good though. Last screw. Alright, that's going in good. Yes, I am working in a John boat in the water. The customer didn't want to pull the boat, so we had to make uh, arrangements for that to occur. Um, when I do my final tightening, I like to use a screwdriver so I can feel the... Uh, the tightness of the screw so you because you can really overwork that screw with a drill and it'll strip out or break or whatever so i suggest using a screwdriver to get your final tightness and here i'm lining it up to make sure that it's flowing over the transducer properly you don't want it to be too low or too high um, Garmin has a pretty good diagram of that in the instructions included so i'll give it one good final tight It's very hard to work from this boat. It's, there's no torque. All right, now I'm gonna snug the bolts up on the bracket that hold the transducer so that I can straighten it up, get it level. Throw the cable in the boat over the transom there. All right, nice and straight. We're gonna put some ring ties on there to hold it. Let's get this baby tightened up first. I like my new shirts, just got those made. My new logo design. All right, nice and straight, smooth. Water flows over it just like it should. Um, I suggest that you mark those holes for your transducer bracket in the center so if you do need to adjust it you can loosen it slide it up and down um, here you can see we have the zip ties on nice and straight feeding over the transom and we're good to go all right so the rest of the install was mainly just plug and play mount the box plug the wires in their proper locations um, here you can see the first images we got when we turned it on um, this is completely unchanged this is how it starts out of the box um, with some fine tuning, you can get a really good picture. 
you can start to see a little bit of images um, of fish moving beneath the boat. Um, even though we are in pretty shallow water and on the boat lift, you can still see that there is some fish uh, swimming beneath us there. Um, <clears throat> you can see a little bit more here if you look right there. There's one right there swimming around down there. You know, not a great detail yet, but in this video here, you'll start to see a little bit more. There's a crab buoy up ahead, and we're going to show you how we um, spotted that the line going down to the trap. So if you look, you'll see it's coming into the picture here. That's the rope that's going down to the trap. That's here you can see the anchor line. We're gonna drop the anchor, raise it and lower it and whatever, so you can see how it actually has those returns pretty uh, quickly. There you can see we're raising the anchor and now we're gonna lower it so you can see that the uh, return time is, is pretty quick. It's very, very fast, so. Um, it's a really, really cool sounder. Now you can see it's going back up. Perfect. Looks really good. And you can see we fine tune the image a little bit too. Here you can see the comparison of our standard or traditional transducer image of a ship and then the actual live scope image of a ship. So that's cool. But uh, Overall, we really love this thing. I think it's something you guys should definitely invest in. It's fun to use. You can actually see fish swimming around under the boat. Um, I can't wait to see what they have, you know, as far as updates for it. So, um, until next time, guys, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Any comments, just hit me up. Thanks again.